Solutions Lab. I'm Chris Phillips. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, we have a fantastic uh, topic and two great speakers to talk to you today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, being happy working wherever you are. And we've got uh, 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 HP, Intel, and Microsoft to help us out with this webcast. But two speaker speakers from HP specifically. First, we got uh, RJ Page. RJ, how's it going? Good. I said, Jay, I did, you know what? <laughs> we, did, we just talked about this two minutes ago. We just talked about this two minutes ago, guys, and I'm going to be yourself. Bart Simpson. I'm going to be Bart Simpson at the front of the crash room writing JR's name at the end of the class. Don't worry. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> JR, hope you're doing well today. Yes, I'm uh, doing next great. We have, next, we have Paula. Hey, Paula, how's it going? Good. Glad to be here. The internet, the internet tried to swallow Paula whole right before we started, but she <laughs> bought off the interwebs and is here joining us today. Uh, before we get yes. started, I want to kind of give you guys uh, a quick overview of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, uh, JR and Paula are going to be uh, presenting uh, on uh, the new uh, Evo platform and also the kind of the latest in, in Windows. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the, throughout the entire presentation, uh, ask them in the Q&A window. I'm going to go ahead and uh, highlight that for you so you know where to ask the questions. Um, feel free to ask any time. I will interject them as part of the presentations. If we don't get a chance to get to your questions uh, uh, while the presentation is happening, we'll have some time at the end of this broadcast to do more uh, question and answers. Uh, we will also be doing uh, poll questions throughout the broadcast. Uh, those will pop up on your screen. Uh, take a moment to answer them because uh, your feedback will kind of help us uh, drive the conversation uh, further on. Uh, there are also some resources that are available. i uh, highlight those as well. Uh, you can view those now or wait until after the broadcast. Uh, and that's a little bit more information on the topics we're going to talk about today. Uh, but to kick things off, I'm going to go to uh, JR. JR, uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, share your screen and uh, get this started. And I'm going to start writing your name on the blackboard <laughs> while, while, you're, while you're talking. That's okay. I've been called a lot worse, so that's all right. <laughs> Today, no less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Is, is my, my slide showing up for everybody okay? Yep. Okay, perfect. Well, guys, I really appreciate you allowing me to be here today. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, DNH is a great partner. We love love work with you guys. And, and, and really, this format is kind of a, a neat, cool format to use, so I'm, I'm excited about that. But my name is J.R. Page. Um, I'm the HP Intel Channel Alliance Specialist, um, and that's kind of a, a mouthful, but basically what that means is, is my, my role within HP is to make sure that, that HP is hitting all of Intel's priorities. And so today I want to talk to you kind of about a lot of those priorities, uh, really focus on our Evo product, um, talk a little bit about our vPro product and, and the importance of our security. I think that those are, those are big hot buttons within, within the industry right now and specifically within um, Intel. So. Those are the things we're going to be discussing today. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to jump up and answer them. You know, ask them, interrupt me, whatever you have to do. Jump in the chat. We'll make sure that we get, get those taken care of. So on the screen now, what you see is going into 2023, you're going to see some of Intel's major priorities, right? These are things you're going to hear over and over again from Intel, right? We're going to talk about deeper security, the easier manageability, richer collaboration, and then our productivity, right? That's always important. So these are the kind of the, the pillars that HP's, or the HP and Intel's built their priorities around it. So we're gonna make sure that we, we touch on all these today. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about, and this kind of leads us to our first poll question, is I wanna talk about Evo, right? Within that, that productivity and production that we have is we wanna discuss Evo, and, and, and I wanna get an idea of what your guys' understanding of Evo and, and the Intel Evo product line is. So if you could all answer that question, it's on your screen right now, I'd appreciate it question is how familiar are you with the intel evo products go ahead and uh, answer that well you can keep going we'll let, uh, give people a minute or two to answer and we'll kind of show the results okay perfect. Uh, in a second um one of the things when you think of evo there, there's a couple there's a couple things i want you guys all to keep in mind when you when you see that that badge if you see right in the the corner of my slide there's an evo badge and that's the way you can always identify what machines have evo on them and what machines don't now Evo, Evo is a product line that's that's going to be designed with a couple different metrics involved. And so it's, when you see that badge, you can know that you're getting certain features that are only available within this Evo product line. And so that's something that's always important to remember. 
Now on the screen, we have a couple things we want to talk about. And the first is we want to talk about our real performance, right? When you talk about Evo, it's always going to be something that's going to be powered by a 12th gen processors, right? Those are the current processors. Those things are out there right now. I know we have 13th gen that are coming down the, the line here pretty quick. Um, and, and those will be fit in when, when they get around. But, but for right now, they're all powered by this 12th gen processor. Now that's an important processor. And I'm going to talk a little bit more detail about the 12th gen processor a little later on. But I think that that performance, anytime you want a machine, you're going to look at the importance of our performance. The next thing you're going to see is you're going to talk about our real connections, right? You're going to be able to connect anywhere. What happened is after we went through this COVID and this, uh, the shutdown and all the craziness that happened around that, we gave birth to this new worker, this hybrid worker that's out there, right? A person who's working from home, they're working from the office, uh, and now they're starting to go back on the road again and work from the airports and things like that. So we we're, we're need to be able to connect from a bunch of different locations, and, and we need to be able to connect quickly. Everybody's taking phone calls and taking meetings on the road, and, and we needed to make sure that we have something that's there for you. And so anytime you see that VPro badge, you're going to know uh, – that Evo badge, excuse me, you're going to see that you're going to get something with a Wi-Fi 6 or, and the Thunderbolt technology, two things that are going to be evident in all Evo machines. Hey, next JR, I just want to let you know that the uh, poll question is done. Uh, the answers uh, for how familiar are you with Evo, Intel's Evo products, 17% uh, said very, 67% said somewhat, and 14% said not at all. Okay, excellent. Well, good. Hopefully, by the end of this this presentation, you'll be able to have a better understanding of that evil product as we go through that. Um, now, the next metric I want to talk about is, is having the freedom of battery life, right? I think that's important. Anytime we talk about notebooks, we want to talk about battery life. So anytime you see that Evo badge on a machine, you're going to know that you're going to be guaranteed to get at least nine hours of battery life. And, and I want to also point out that that nine hours of battery life is in a full HD display. You know, it's not one of those things that where you kind of crank down all the all the different requirements and all the processing power of a machine to, to increase the battery life, we're going to make sure that you get the, the most out of your machine always. And so in this, you're going to get at least nine hours of battery life. And one of the things that's really important with this is we talked about how everybody's moving around is you're going to also be able to get four additional hours of battery life with just a 30 minute charge on all Evo machines. And so this is something that's very critical to our, to our uh, customers. when we talk to them about that and the importance of Evo, something that we knew we needed to hit. Uh, the next thing is with our real flow, right? We're going to have these these people leaving and walking away from their desk and going all over the place. And so it's important that we have uh, be able to wake up from our laptops. When you, when you leave your desk, it goes to sleep. Now you come back, we make, need to make that sure that that's turned back on in at least one second or less. Um, and that's that's guaranteed on all of our, our Evo machines. Also, our Evo machines are going to have real uh, XE graphics cards. They're going to be on everything. So you're going to get our, the top graphics cards you need. And then the last thing you're going to get on there is you're going to get uh, machines that have the AV features that you need to make sure you can do your calls and you can do all the things you need to do to be productive. And so these are all the, the requirements that you're going to see in an Evo machine. And I want to go to my next slide here, and it kind of kind of goes over those same things, but I just want to know when you see this, when you see that Evo badge, always know that there are certain metrics that are going to be on every Evo machine. And, and these metrics are tested. There's a, there's a testing process that Intel takes all their machines through to make sure that these specs are hit. And so whenever you see that badge, you know that these are what you're getting. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about kind of is where Evo, how Evo evolved and how, how it became. I do get a lot of a lot of confusion around Evo and VPro, and we're gonna talk about both today. So I wanted to, I like this slide because it kind of shows us what those differences are. And so you can look at that and understand where we're coming from, from each of those different badges there. When you think of VPro, right, I want you to be able to think of, you know, your business class performance, your advanced security features, your modern manageability, and your stability. These are the, the four pillars of Evo or VPro. Those are things that are always gonna be found when you hear people talking about those, that's what you want to turn to is that, that VPro discussion, right? Now, over on the other side, when you talk about Evo, this is what our users want, right? So you're going to hear stuff like responsiveness, battery life, instant on wake. You're going to hear about the stylish form factors. And, and when you can also have a machine that has both Evo and VPro together. And I think the important part of that is when you merge those two together, you get what IT needs and what our users want. And so just know there is a difference between VPro. And we're going to go into a, a little more deeper discussion into, into VPro in a little bit. Um, but I want to make sure that you know that there is a difference between the two. And you can kind of see, you know, when, you, when you're talking to people and when you want to 
have a discussion with someone around that, which side you want to go to. You know, if you're talking about security, you want to talk about VPRO. If you're talking about battery life, you want to be talking about EVO. So you can kind of get that idea there. Now, one thing that's very important, I think this is this is critical for all, all of us, is whenever we think about uh, looking at Intel and HP together, is a lot of times our competitors like to single out one particular component of, a, of our whole platform. And I think it's important to always draw back the conversation to, about a complete solution. And I think this is where HP, Intel, and Microsoft really are a step above everybody else is together they make it a, a unit and the security that can give you the, the most productive machine that you have out there. It's also gonna give you the most secure machine out there. And so again, sometimes our competitors will like to, to single out one or one or more of these little, little caveat things where they're cores or this type of stuff. It's important to always draw them back to the conversation about the overall platform because I think that that's where Intel and HP and Microsoft really excel from everybody else is, is that togetherness, that working together to make sure that you have the most productive machine out there. Now, the next thing I want to show, I talked a little bit about the 12th gen processor and why that's so important. Um, with any new Intel processor, right, you're going to see performance increases. We're going to see it when we see, go to the 13th gen. But there was a big difference with it from the 11th gen to the the 12th gen, we have this new uh, architecture that came about. So I want to make sure everybody understands the new architecture around the Intel chip and why it's it's better than everything else. And so I want to show you a quick little video. Introducing 12th generation Intel core processors, which deliver the best of both worlds. Intel has made this dynamic approach possible by combining two processing core micro architectures in a new performance hybrid design. Its performance cores, or P cores, are the highest performing CPU cores that Intel has ever built. Prioritizing burst performance. Its efficient cores, or E cores, deliver scalable multi-threaded performance, plus dedicated efficient offloading of background tasks for modern multitasking. 12th generation Intel core processors also have new intelligence built directly into the hardware with Intel Thread Director. Intel Thread Director lets the operating system place the right application on the right core at the right time by intelligently monitoring and analyzing demand in real time. Background activities are efficiently offloaded to the E cores, unlocking the massive performance and responsiveness of the P cores. That means you don't have to make a choice between performance and efficiently handling simultaneous tasks anymore. Let's take a look at how 12th generation Intel core processors change the game. generation Intel core processors, it's a game changer. Okay, uh, what that video did is hopefully that video explained a little bit about the architecture of the, of the HP chips and, and the Intel chips. And I think it's really important when you look at that is for the years we've been kind of uh, condition to think of when you think of processors, you think of cores, right? When you think of more cores, you think of a faster processor. With this latest uh, iteration of the Intel chip and the new architecture they developed on this, it's really changed it. And it really goes to tell us that all cores aren't created equally. And so as that video showed out, we have two different cores on our processors now. And that's really what separates our processors from everybody else's, right? We first have the P cores of these performance cores, right? They're going to handle our big major tasks that we do every day. These tasks are things that, you know, we want to make sure that get our full attention and we don't have any power diverted for other little tasks. 
Now that's where the e-course come into play, right? On the side, we have, you know, emails that are getting sent to us all day long and we wanna make sure those emails get downloaded. We wanna make sure our software is updated, all that kind of stuff. Those small little tasks are handled by our e-cores, right? Those efficient cores, cores, excuse me. Those cores are designed to make sure that as our P-cores are working, we don't lose any, any power and we're able to take care of the task. And so now all of this is done so that we can make sure that we're more efficient and we work better and, and faster in our in our jobs. Now, the one important thing about this, and it's important to know, is that this all works because of directly onto our chip, there's built this technology. It's called the Intel Thread Director, and that's built directly onto our silicone. And this allows our silicone to kind of learn our work habits and understand what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. This allows it to make sure that each core gets the proper task and, and it makes sure that it's, it's dividing those up. Now, a good thing to, to bring out is when we have these cores, if the e-cores are not working, in the, if they're in the background, there's nothing going on, those e-cores also kick in and help out with the, the performance cores as well. So again, we get that, that great performance that we're used to. So that's something really to, to bring into, into focus there. All right. Now the next hey, thing JR, I wanted... there's a question that did come up uh, regarding the 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 architecture there. Um, yes. Uh, there was a question about whether this is uh, more of a these uh, new Intel chips help for more for performance or for uh, power. Um, uh, for geez, my brain's not working there. It's working for a battery life. Excuse me. Is it more of a battery life play or is it more of a, a, a power play? Uh, both. It, it does both, right? And, and so what it does is it allows it to make sure that those cores are designed to go the same thing. And so it, it doesn't affect your battery life. You know, it, it's something you, we can't turn on and off in the in the processor. It's mm -hmm. something that's always there. And it just helps mm -hmm. to make sure that that power is distributed evenly through there. So you don't have those ebbs and flows. I think sometimes the best way to think of this is I, and I this happened to me personally. Um, I'd work on some big spreadsheets and all of a sudden I'd be mm -hmm. working on a spreadsheet with some a lot of information on it. Then all of a sudden I have a big email come over in the, in the past and all of a sudden what happened is my machine would kind of bog down, right? It would it cause that spinning you'd see on, on an Excel document to kind of go around. That's supposed to prevent that, right? That, that's allowing yeah. to make sure that we don't have to take power from, from that process. So it doesn't affect the battery life from that standpoint. Now, obviously it's going to help because you don't have those ebbs and flows that, that, that create that out. Hopefully you, hopefully you don't that have always have those, you don't have the, uh, the full, P core doing email task when you don't need to. So that'll help with battery life. Correct. Yes. And and, and that, that makes it so you're not, you know, not draining the power from a battery unnecessarily when it doesn't need to. All right. Absolutely. Sounds good. All right. Now the next thing I want to get into and talk a little bit about takes us to our next poll question, right? Is and our next poll question is around our V Pro products. Uh, this is something that's kind of been a pillar for Intel for quite a while. Uh, I want to just make sure where you guys are at as far as your knowledge on on Intel V Pro, you know, you know a lot about it. Is it something you've heard of, but you're not sure about or not at all? The reason this is so important, and I think as we go into 2023, and again, it kind of goes hand in hand with that hybrid worker, is the fact that this is gonna be so important because of the fact that security is such a big issue right now, because it's so much harder for our IT departments to keep everything secure because everybody, we have people who are working from home. We have people who are working from a Starbucks. We have people all over the place and that makes it really difficult on, on our IT departments and specifically our security. So that's where VPro really comes in to make sure that we understand what that is and how that makes sure that we have a more secure unit. So what I have on the screen now is I have, a, I have an option. You know, in years past, we've always thought of security. When we thought of security, we kind of thought, hey, we'll, we'll put some software on it, we'll take care of it, and we kind of forget about it and go away. Well, well that's long past, right? We're not, gonna, we're not doing that anymore. In order to make sure that our units are secure, we have to have multi-fauceting uh, security system in the place. And so I think what we have here, when you have, when you think of Intel and their vPro security system, you think of HP Wolf security, and then you think of Microsoft and their security system, together this makes the most secure unit in the market. And I think it's important that we realize that we have all this. As you can see these different columns to the side on our screen, it will show all the different uh, benefits you get from each of those. Now, the be beautiful thing about Intel uh, HP and Microsoft is we design our products together. We work together to make sure all of our products work seamlessly together so you can get the greatest benefits to your, to your needs. Now, again, what's really important is that we have not only protection, uh, 
above the OS, but we need to be below the OS protection, right? So we need to be able to maintain uh, protection against our malware, uh, peripheral attacks. These are all kinds of things that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis nowadays. And so with this, you can kind of see from the, the features we're showing up on the screen, how that's protected. One of the biggest features that comes when we're talking about Intel Hardware Shield and, and vPro is the fact that we're able to now seamlessly go out there and push our patches out uh, wirelessly to our fleets. This is something, I have a buddy of mine who's in the IT department, and this is one of his favorite features of, of Intel vPro is the fact that he can he doesn't have to worry about patching his unit up because it's such a task and such a hard process. It was a hard process when everybody's in the office, and now it's even more of a difficult task is pushing those patches out, those security patches to everybody and keeping everybody up to date. It's very, very difficult in today's environment. And now because of this new feature, we're able to do this. I shouldn't say new feature, it's been around uh, vPro and all those things in Intel hardware shield, but you're able to seamlessly push those uh, patches out to the entire fleet all at once without having to worry about the downtime. So that's something that's very important. So the other thing that's very important Oh. Uh, if you want, if you, we have the results from the poll question. If you want to do that, or do you want to finish up what you're doing here? Okay, yeah. So it looks like from, and I'll just read those off from Intel. But it's kind of what, 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 what I normally get is when I talk about vPro. Is it says you know about seventy percent of you are are somewhat familiar with vPro, um, with eighteen percent very, very in, you know knowledgeable about it. And then there's 13% who know it not at all. And so hopefully, again, just like with the vPro, this is something out of the Evo, you'll be able to understand this a little bit more after this presentation. All right. And the final thing I want to really talk about with our security is really the in the OS is, you know, what, what are we going to do to make sure it's locked up? With Intel vPro, we're able to be able to identify threats before our machines boot up. And I think that that's, that kind of protection really, really is useful for our machines. And so make sure that we don't, don't open a machine and spread a, spread a virus everywhere throughout our organization. So that's something that's very, very important. Now I want to go to the last, the last poll question really quick. And it's, this is more for my, my knowledge is I want to know how important security is uh, when purchasing PCs for you guys out there. Is it something that's a primary factor, something you think about all the time, or is it something, one of many factors you, you incorporate when coming up with something, or if it's something that doesn't come up at all, this is something I think could be pretty important right there. So again, guys, that's all I have for my presentation. I'll kind of let those those uh, poll questions come in as we go, but that's that's all I have. And, and, and finally, I just want to let you know, I'm here to support you guys. Anytime you have questions about anything Intel, uh, my name's JR Page. I'm here to support you. There's my email on there. Feel free to you know, send me any questions you have. If it didn't get answered here, um, we, can, we can answer it later. So again, thanks a lot. And thanks, DNH, for allowing me to be here. Thanks, guys. So there are a couple of questions. Uh, if you want to go ahead and if you want to go ahead and answer them now before we kind of move on to Paul, Paula, uh, specifically around Evo products, uh, you mentioned wired options. Any Evo models that include an RJ45 jack? Uh, no, as of as of right now, there are there are no RJ45 connections on those. Uh, Bob had a question. I don't know if you'll have any insight to it. Is whether uh, there is any system compatibility? Uh, with, I'm assuming he means vPro because that's when the question came in, with the Intel compute devices. Um, so I'm not sure I understand the question. We repeat it one more time. Uh, Bob was Bob's question was uh, system compatibility with Intel compute devices. I assume he was referring to vPro, which, okay. and, and again, uh, Bob, if you could clarify, what I take that to mean is like the Intel, the small Intel compute devices, but um, maybe Bob can clarify. Uh, and if not, Bob, then, you can uh, you can email me and we can discuss this later too. If if yeah, I can Zen had a question. Uh, how does HP uh, Wolf Security and Intel Hardware Security? work with endpoint protection offerings from organizations like Webroot? Do they work together or are there conflicts? Uh, they do. Um, so they, they actually work very well together, uh, making sure that our, you know they talk to one another. I think one of the most important things is, is the AI that's built into these, especially on the vPro side of things, it, that enables those systems to talk to one another to kind of identify 
threats that they they see and, and allow those other systems to work and do whatever you know whatever their primary function is in order to take care of that threat all right um that is it for now for questions on the evo intel side uh if you guys have any more questions for for uh, jr on the hp evo products uh with the intel processors uh go ahead and ask them uh we can get back to those at the end of the broadcast but i want to move on to uh, Paula, before the internet swallows her whole again, and see if we can get uh, uh, her her presentation from the Microsoft point of view. Uh, Paula, how's it going? Hopefully, we can get her on on mute. You, you got us, Paula. So so far, yes. so good. Yes, it has been kind of a fun day today, but I'm glad to be here. I'm real excited to be here and share um, some great information do a little bit of refresh on Windows 11 and give you some uh, presentation. So much of what um, JR covered are part of this deck. So you see here the cover sheet on here, your partner logo would go in there. So I'm kind of going to walk you through the Windows 11 piece, lots and lots and lots of questions around Windows 11 um, and the whole just value prop around modernizing um, the fears that you get from questions uh, clients on questions around Windows 11. And, um, you know, as you know, we all are hearing very, um, you know, continuing to hear about security issues and concerns that we have. And so I want to share, I want to kind of start off with sharing that um, Microsoft actually had commissioned Forrester to do a outside study and examine that ROI for customers that are deploying their window 11 devices. And so here was kind of a summary. I'll go through it sort of quickly, but again, hoping that you can pick out the nuggets and you can share these um, going forward with your clients, helping to give them some comfort and understanding that there is ROI there, right? There is, um, you know, even a payback within less than six months. So when the cost conversation starts to happen versus the security benefits that they get, they're gonna have that um, comfort level um, and security of being able to switch over. So if you look here a little bit, we're looking at reduced security risk, why? Because of the modern CPU. So JR was touching quite a bit around the security piece on the Intel side. And also now it's turned on by default, which in the older devices was not necessarily the case. The secure boot that he talked about as well, BitLocker encryption for the drive, and then just that overall advanced processor uh, capability that goes in. So if, you're, so if you look at the, um, the increased productivity for the security teams, that IT benefactor that happens from having that built-in security as well as the, um, just the, the, the reduced number of uh, help desk calls that they have just because they don't have to go in and do those compliance checks and comp compatibility uh, checks on the solutions as well. And then you have that increase in user productivity. So this again was the outside study that was done. These are the results from it. You're looking at over a three year period, 250% ROI. That's gotta be appealing to any business owner out there, whether SMB, enterprise or anything in between. Um, and then it just gives you just the key assumptions on here too, in terms of, you know, kind of this, what the uh, sample uh, uh, profile looked like. So again, just going back into, if you look at this visual here, it helps a little bit. You also have um, some backup from different industries and in talking about that benefit that they have in terms of moving to that Windows 11 Pro. I, um, I know that there have been uh, some discussions around uh, how long uh, Windows 10 is gonna be supported. That's through June of 2025. So um, when you are having those conversations around, you know, it's, it's not necessarily um, a nice to have right now. It's it, it, turning into a necessity to start putting that, that plan in place for certain. Um, but again, we'll share these slides with you. If you have any questions, pop them in the chat. Maybe I can answer, maybe I can't. If I can't, I certainly will get you the answer as well. Um, so let's do the Windows 11 refresh. I know that's what we were kind of tasked to do on this training today. Again, these slides are available to you to use with your clients um, and just wanted to kind of highlight some, some uh, great points that you'll, that you'll want to probably put in your notes or they can be in your notes. Uh, we can make sure they're in the notes of the deck as well. But 
um, looking at, so built for secure hybrid work, right? Hybrid's not going away. We know this business owners expect that they're gonna expand their digital footprint. They already feel that hybrid work leaves them vulnerable to security threats, right? And so they also agree that modern devices address that issue. And so um, having that updated firmware, making sure that you have those devices that have that built-in security, again, not just you know a nice to have, it really is a necessary. So when you're looking at the old devices and you're looking at this, it's uh, you know it's putting businesses at risk, right? You can see the data here as we're going along here, uh, experiencing the firmware attacks because it's old. Um, and then you have that uh, security as the um, top priority, uh, way over performance, reliability, and compatibility. So um, when you have your modern devices um, with that modern solution, it addresses so many of these issues by replacing it. So. Um, you have aging PCs, um, which, which um, you wanna go in and just have these kind of bullet points. You're talking about reducing your firmware attacks by three times, you have fewer um, ID theft issues by almost three times, and then of course your compatibility in your apps runs at 99%. So if you have an application that you're actually, you know, an, an in-house app that you need to have that compatibility with. You go to a link, they help to solve it, and then you don't have an issue anymore. So 99% of those apps working on all of your devices uh, for IT is uh, a dream. So, um, and then, which also goes into the accelerated productivity. When you're looking at a simplified user interface, of course, it helps to um, bring along that, um, workflow streamlined, you have less of an issue with your um, organization. It has a, a customized desktop that you can use, which actually has the different desktops that you have. So um, you have for organizations, they may have two different ones set up um, and then they don't have to keep going back and resetting them up. So it really saves time. It does increase that productivity, which is really fantastic. You have your staff layouts which also is um, extremely uh, time, uh, time saving instead of time consuming, um, and just an overall smarter desktop experience. So you have that better um, voice, you have that better streaming, you just have an overall general sense of uh, great experience and also higher productivity. Uh, voice typing for those that need it, that voice focus, it just has a uh, very flowing sort of it works into a higher productivity um, for that user um, and you know, with less delays and certainly smarter technology it creates for a, a much higher productive environment. So we touched on strength, strength and security. Um, again, putting this in here because it's a big one, you have that hardware-based chip to cloud, that security to the app, to the devices, to identity and then of course to services. So it takes that whole flow and puts that in there as well. Um, blocks the untrusted software and also users from uh, running malicious uh, apps. Uh, a lot of times we talk about the big security piece is really the human factor. Um, this helps to make sure that that's not an issue. And then you have Windows presence. So it sense, senses you um, when you are arriving and when you leave. And so it locks out that screen as well. It has that phishing detection, which is great um, too. And then uh, the cloud-based protection and security, security policy management. So all of those layered on with that strength and security just make for that ultimate and secure environment as well. And then, of course, going on to um, the modern management piece. So uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, for those of you that are familiar, obviously, this device and this operating system 11 are what caused Microsoft Endpoint Manager and that modern management to really work and to really flow. So you have your modern devices with the Windows 11 Pro powered by your Intel B Pro hardware. Um, and that out-of-the-box deployment. Uh, you have your remote management capabilities, which um, 
allow the IT team to be working on things they need to be and should be more value added, as opposed to a lot of the stuff that they work on that this takes away from them. So you have um, the app Assure, which I mentioned earlier too, which also kind of goes into that management piece as well. And then the real time support that you get uh, through the cloud. So um, one of the things that we're not going into a lot of detail on, but you could, um, we could actually do an entire um, 30 minutes or 45 minutes talking through uh, Windows Autopilot and kind of how that fits into that modern management. But it's certainly a component. It helps to simplify how devices are deployed, how they're reset, how they're repurposed. Uh, again, taking that migration piece off of the IT desk, um, huge benefit there. And then also IT admin, you know, they can send the uh, templated org messages out to, you know, the entire corporation with the logo and everything. Um, you have lots of um, configurable tools that Microsoft Endpoint Manager is your kind of your control panel. It helps to really uh, make sure that your users, your devices, your settings, your policies, everything get followed. Makes it very, very simple to manage that environment as well. So, um, so, so when you're looking at the what's new, the powerful out of the box protection, again, you're looking at that security out of the box. Um, you're looking at that management and ease of management too, and the evolving uh, threats that happen as well. That the security um, will always be a front and fore center until we have businesses out there that understand refreshing their, you know, modern infrastructure has, it's, it's just at the point now where it's not a nice to have, it really is truly uh, for the business environment is a, now you have to get there. And um, so, so hopefully in doing the refresh on Windows 11, we can um, address the questions that they have, um, maybe go specifically in a little deeper on what area they might have questions on. But uh, for SMB, Enterprise Fed, SLED, um, this is going to be something that's not going away. The security piece, uh, like I said, will continue to be there. Now we have the most secure um, operating system in Windows 11. And we have the hardware that now um, take advantage of that as well. And so there isn't really any reason for them um, to not consider doing the modern refresh. So um, with that said, I just want to say thank you and I appreciate your time. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to um, happy to answer those. So uh, there was one question that came in um, and I believe you did answer it, but I wanted to just uh, pass it along to you anyway. Uh, Zen was asking, what uh, do you attribute to the increased security of Windows 11 Pro? Are you saying that Windows 11 Pro is more secure than Windows 10 Pro? And yes. I think, the an I think you answered that the first part right. of that, but the second part is, is it more secure than Windows 10? It absolutely is, and um, primarily because it was designed with the whole, so Windows 11 was really created because of the hybrid environment. Um, and not to say that Windows 10 isn't secure, Windows 10 is actually secure, but Windows 11 has just been created to take a little bit more advantage of the chip to cloud protection that um, was necessary for that hybrid environment. So it actually is being called the most secure Windows operating system. Um, but the nice thing is Windows 11 10 or Windows 11 and Windows 10, they coexist in the environment very well. And so you get the goodness, the security goodness and the updates that come through 11 that also come onto 10. So you kind of have that that's shared between the two on those devices and that coexisting um, environment. You're gonna, have, you're gonna have those clients and you already know who they are. You're gonna have those clients that have had a hard time giving up their very old uh, Windows operating systems um, and, you know, with the kind of that paradigm of, Hey, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, do you want a secure environment, or you know, I mean, is this something that you're going to continue to fear? And and the and uh, as we saw with that Forrester study, and I can actually include the link on that in the deck that we send. You can go. There's a lot of information there. I didn't want to spend uh, an, a lot of time going through the study. We can certainly do that, but it's one of those things you kind of want to go through and kind of pick through what 
um, what you would need to answer depending on that client, but, um, and the specific questions that they might have. Um, but there is, um, I already forgot the point that I was going to make on the study, uh, but the point being that the study <clears throat> helps to understand kind of the profile that was taken, the benefit of the kind of factors that were taken into it. And it really does provide you with the um, kind of the backup that shows how much is being spent on environments that have legacy devices and all the additional costs that goes into providing for security. That's why it showed that 250% uh, ROI over a three-year period. And plus, investing into it, you actually get your money back in six months. So what they're not realizing is though they're not paying for it in a device or paying for it and trying to provide that security for that old device that has that, that uh, vulnerable firmware that has you know kind of those vulnerabilities that are in it that they're spending a ton of money trying to secure. So I mean, I guess in a nutshell, that's kind of where that would where I would lend out with. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Michael had a question. Uh, since the recommendation is to upgrade to new hardware and Windows 11, is there a complete tool to transfer users' configurations from their old Windows 10 computers to their new Windows 11? He's had bad result, uh, bad results with tools like that in the past. Uh, bad results like, is there an example of a bad result? There, there's no bad results. I could, I could imagine just not the entire configuration moving over from one system to the next. If, if uh, one system so has a certain preferences new... set up in 10, how do, they, how do they seamlessly import them to 11? Well, a lot of times it is actually through the Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and it's as much as looking at a panel and doing just doing the updates, and that's pretty much what it is. Um, when you use Autopilot and you're deploying, and we'll just take a small number, you know, 50 devices out or whatever, you have the serial number that gets in, you know, kind of input into in tune, and everything is by the time everything's uh, sent to to um, Azure through Intune, you have, I mean, it's all done right there, kind of in a panel, uh, a control center kind of look. So um, it really is, it does, it, I know it doesn't sound like it's um, that easy, but it's pretty seamless and it continues to get that way as things are, you know, that chip to cloud, that everything's kind of directed to that cloud. It just kind of does that, that flow through. The, the nice thing about the controls too, is that you typically have um, orgs that you align it to, or you'll have, um, you know, your policies and your users, and it's just a lot easier to manage um, how you want to manage those environments through um, through the through the um, tool. And um, updates from 10 to 11, it really is just an up. The upgrade is actually an update. It's that um, it's that simple. So. Um, recommendations are you don't do it all at once take one make sure every app that you're running in your environment has no issues if there is you do the app assure have them work out the kink in that particular app that might be maybe not flowing right and once you have that one device or maybe a series of devices based on works and what apps they're using um, use that as the pilot and once that all works together then you roll it out to the organization. So that's kind of that that prepared, um, that plan and prepare and then deploy. I mean, those are kind of the stages that you would go through to make that happen. But it is designed to be fairly seamless. Uh, Michael did follow up with this, but I actually wanted to ask a question of the viewers and I, I regret not having the poll question because it was about a year ago today that, that I was here and we were talking about Windows 11 again, or Windows mm -hmm. 11, it was earlier into its life cycle and there was less of a population of people that are on Windows 11 right now. So what I wanna know from the viewers, and you can just answer in the, the, the Q&A, is if you're running a Windows operating system today, which one is it? Is it 10, is it 11? If you say XP, I'm going to remove you from this <laughs> webcast because you have some up upgrading to do. But there's gonna be there's gonna be a, someone that goes Windows 3.1, and you know what? They just get a prize. But just I'm just kind of curious how many people are in 10 and how many people are in 11. Michael was spe talking specifically about uh, people that had um, uh, 
uh, registry uh, information for app settings uh, not being moved over when they uh, transfer from 10 to 11. Typically, uh, that's a little bit more difficult. But like you said, if you go, if you you have the ability through through um, uh, uh, things like um, an Intune or things of that nature to set preferences for everyone to kind of uh, make those right. settings more global. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it, mm -hmm. and, and and quite frankly, coming back from from the people that are the from you guys, it's 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 a little bit more mixed than it was before. Before it was it was a lot of ten, very few eleven. I was on ten a year ago. I'm on eleven now. Uh, it, it actually I, it's probably more of a mix. I have a, a a personal computer that's on eleven. My work computer is still on ten. It's it's a mixed environment, like you you said. There's a lot of mixed environments happening right now. But typically, right. from what I'm seeing from people, it's 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 fifty fifty. Some people still on ten. Some people have moved to eleven. Uh, you know, uh, I, I was interested to see kind of where everyone's sitting at. So it's encouraging right. to kind of start to see people start to move towards eleven because I do agree with you, Paula. There's a lot of security advantages along with sure. other advantages. The the mute button that's at the bottom of Windows eleven has become my my go-to thing if you haven't had windows 11 yet and you do a lot of uh teams or webex or zoom that little uh, which is another thing i didn't button. actually mention but you probably Go got ahead. the initial windows 11 training and that is what's nice about 11 too is that teams is actually embedded into windows 11 as opposed to sitting on top of the operating system like windows 10 so you don't have it's a it is a total storage hog for when it's with Windows 10, but in 11, it, it isn't. Uh, it's a lot more streamlined. It, it uh, opens up all that additional storage that you have now. Um, so that's another huge advantage for teams on Windows 11 is it just is a lot more fun to use. It seems like it um, works with you instead of against you in some some cases. Not saying that it's bad on 10, it's just, you know, it just takes up a ton of uh, memory. So I'll play, de I'll play Dev I I devil's advocate. Now for our resellers, because I know this question is going to come in. Uh, and I know this was at the uh, launch of Windows 11. The Teams that was integrated with Windows 11 was not the Teams that was for uh, Office 365. If you had an Office 365 environment, it wasn't the same thing. It was the, it was the personal Teams environment. Uh, has Microsoft gotten around to making sure that the integrated Teams also supports Office 365, or is that still hasn't happened yet? If the answer is I don't know, we'll, we can look into it for later as well. Well, actually, the the answer is that's surprising to me because I use both, um, and I've not okay. noticed the difference. Um, in yeah, I've I, in my I and I'm, I'm speaking versus... I'm speaking personally. I can't log into any Office 365 environments with the embedded Windows 11 Teams application. It's for the the personal Teams uh, devices. So. Maybe it's just me. Well, we can maybe, you and I maybe can, everyone else we, we can take it offline and I can help you. <laughs> I can I can actually help you with that. You can share your desktop and I can help you out with that. So awesome. Getting free tech support on this broadcast. Well, uh there you Paula, go. thank you so much for your time sure. and uh, the presentation today. Uh thank you to JR. I, I am working on the chalkboard back there. It, it's got a lot of work to do. I'll I'll get back to it later. Uh but thank you for everyone who is watching. Um if you uh, miss part of this webcast or you want to watch it again, it will be available on demand probably early next week. At this point, uh, there was a or there is a giveaway as part of this uh, this uh, webcast. It is for a, a jacket. Um, that winner will be also announced uh, next week. So check your emails for that if you are watching this live. Uh, if you have any questions, follow up questions after this broadcast, you can email us solutionslab at dnh.com, and we will make sure they get to the right place. Uh, but other than that, uh, I want to thank uh, Paula and uh, JR for being here today. And thank you guys all for being here today to join us. And we'll see you next time. Great. Thanks, everyone.